Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Najib Al-Khoil. I am from uh, Coventry University. Uh, I'm specialized actually in uh, environmental engineering. Uh, when we come, for example, uh, sustainable energy in that form and climate change and global warming. And the focus, obviously, I, I did uh, um, a number of research uh, is related to uh, energy crop. Okay, uh, energy crop uh, as a form of sustainable energy. Uh, we're going to look actually uh, at uh, a few parts, how this uh, energy crop uh, may have impact actually in the environment, uh, which is the negative side about it. And also it has the positive side on uh, when it comes, for example, uh, minimizing climate change and global warming, as well as providing uh, an asset security for any country may use energy crop for that matter. So the use and the production of energy crop, uh, we may look at that and examine it uh, within this 10 minute uh, presentation. Uh, obviously the energy crop uh, back in historical time been used for 7,000 years before that as price, we're talking about uh, wheat, corn, uh, uh, barley and so on. So uh, human actually, they know quite a lot of, about when it comes to the uh, production, plantation, farming, and so on for energy crops. So this doesn't need actually to go back in detail for that. So we have a huge amount of knowledge about these crops. Having said that, obviously we're talking about selection process for these energy crops. We need to select the most uh, energy contained in these uh, energy crops. And it's a huge task actually to try to select uh, some of these energy crops in order as a form of uh, fuel actually. Uh, to replace uh, the present fossil fuel. Uh, the best way actually to do that, obviously we're talking about the thickness of the wall of, uh, uh, of these uh, crops. And these some of the tests which I have done a uh, few years ago, we're talking about here, sunflower uh, striped seed and sunflower black seed, uh, date seed, corn, rape seed, and so on. And you can see uh, measure in micron. So we're talking about uh, 240 to 290, for example, for sunflower uh, strap seed and go down actually uh, in the thickness. In fact, in the, the research came for rape seed came at the top because there are many other factors, not just the energy factor uh, when it comes to the selection of energy crop. Uh, sunflower seed came second to that. Uh, uh, there are two, obviously, when it comes to crops and oil sources, obviously, we have uh, major oil and minor oil, and these major oil and minor oil, the way we try to obtain the energy crop uh, from the energy crop, the fuel we needed. So we have soya bean, rapeseed, mustard, uh, sunflower, and so on for that, coconut, uh, cotton seed, and, and so on. These are major oil being represented. And then we have the minor one we're talking, talking about here, such as uh, rice bran, tobacco seed, niger seed, uh, tea seed, and so on. Niger seed came actually third in my uh, research when it comes to uh, energy crop, uh, and the amount of energy, but obviously niger seed been used on a smaller scale and mostly produced for the feed for birds and that. So it's not planted around the world on a larger scale compared, compare, for example, sunflower seed or niger seed. Uh, there are a, a certain uh, standard we need to be looked at when it comes to energy crop for that. And this standard, obviously, we're talking about uh, the energy content, uh, the most important part, uh, ignition, uh, how quickly actually uh, within the combustion engine that these fuel we're talking about uh, to be considered, or we'll call it a flashpoint, a viscosity, a carbon residue, a sulfur content, and a safety number and ID number. These should be taken into consideration, and most of these actually, these factors have to be checked actually in the laboratory. Uh, another factor actually should be considered for energy crop. Uh, obviously, we're talking about photosynthesis. Uh, not any plant actually can be uh, used, but when we're looking, looking at photosynthesis, we're talking about the area which a plantation can survive better, have a better chance of survival uh, when there are maybe shortage of water or ch a drastic change in temperature. Uh, and these, we have three different types here, C3, C4, and CIM for that. Uh, so the photosynthesis we're talking about here, uh, the best one came out, obviously C4, uh, which uh, can survive in added condition. And the most common plant actually, they under this uh, type of C4, 
uh, they make better use of water and energy. Uh, we have C3, obviously, uh, C3, say named C3, each one of them named for the amount of carbon actually incorporated uh, into the plant. So uh, C3, for example, as a CO2 incorporated into three carbon compounds. So the plant actually absorbed carbon dioxide to make uh, sugar or starch in the plant, and also in the breathing process release actually the uh, one unit carbon. So this one, the first one, the C3, it may need a, a moist or cool environment for survival. Uh, the other one, obviously, the C4, much better can survive for that. And, uh, and the final one we're talking about, which is the CIM, is slightly different. It's before putting this is the CO2 is stored in the form of an acid for that. But it's very similar, C, uh, CIM similar to CO4 when it comes uh, to uh, surviving in a harsher environment. So energy crop and environmental impact, obviously the environmental impact is huge actually when it comes to uh, specializing in energy crop uh, as a source of energy. Land, you need a huge amount of land. Uh, maybe not every country has a huge uh, land for energy crop. And this many countries actually, they uh, lease certain land in Africa, for example, on 20, 30, 50 years uh, uh, happening at the present time specifically to plant energy crop as a source of energy. Uh, obviously it has an impact for that if these uh, land been taken purely for farming, uh, for the farm, for the purpose of farming uh, energy crop, it may affect the biodiversity in that particular area. It may also have impact on the food production for the local community, for example, and obviously the local community, if that particular area land stop producing uh, sources of food, they may have to import it from a farther away uh, area, i.e. using fossil fuel to transport that uh, crop to that local community, or they may have to import it from outside the country. Uh, obviously water and importer as well, a huge amount of water will be needed and the supply of water, obviously, depending on the geographical location or depending on the rain in that particular area uh, for that, that should be also taken into consideration. Uh, deforestation is one of the worst impact actually when it comes to uh, the usage of energy crop. Uh, South America, for example, large part of South, and South, the rainforest being uh, removed actually for the purpose of farming actually. Uh, and that obviously it accelerates climate change and global warming uh, in this respect. And that should be again be considered carefully for that. Um, other area obviously we're talking about the competition between food as I mentioned earlier on. But this has only happened on a large commercial scale. Uh, the idea that when you use one hectare of land, obviously, uh, such as we're talking about rapeseed in itself, it absorbs a certain amount of uh, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. When you burn that, you release uh, uh, that carbon dioxide on, uh, into the atmosphere, and then you plant it again uh, to absorb that amount. So we're talking about zero uh, carbon dioxide emission for that. Uh, over a long period of time, as I said, as a photosynthesis, it helps actually to minimize carbon dioxide from the atmosphere as it absorbs three units and release one unit in the breathing process. So these considerations should be taken uh, when you plan actually uh, on a large scale uh, for uh, to use energy crop as a source of energy. And that's what I mentioned earlier on. Energy crop as a fuel may help actually stabilizing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And obviously, carbon dioxide is one of the main causes of climate change and global warming, in addition to other greenhouse gases such as methane, uh, nitrogen oxide, and, and so on. Uh, sustainable energy, it is sustainable energy. Uh, we're talking about energy crop, it will never run out, and part of the national security actually, uh, which can be used. So you don't have to depend on other countries to obtain your energy. You could farm actually, using grass for example, and so on, certain types which not compete actually with food such as with scanted, for example. So there's no competition uh, with food rather than using other types. The difference between using uh, energy crops such as for example, uh, we're talking about sunflower seed or red seed or whatever, or wheat or barley, and that could compete with the food sources. While obviously when you're using uh, grass for example, certain type of grass such as miscanted, it's not source of food in itself. And also uh, it, it can reproduce itself very easily and can last for 20, 30, 40 years actually the life cycle of the plant and can observe uh, actually a large amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The only difference is uh, miscanted, for example, 
it doesn't have the same amount of energy as those, for example, uh, uh, sunflower seeds or larger seeds and so on. So that also should be taken into consideration. Uh, just to conclude this, a uh, uh, balance should be made uh, between energy crop and uh, versus uh, the demand for food in itself. And that's an important, actually, especially when it comes for underdeveloping country, that should be taken into consideration. That should not have impact on uh, the food resources. They don't have to import it. They should produce it their own and also the impact on the community and the biodiversity in itself. Uh, each issue connected to the environment, that's an important, obviously. The natural environment should be protected uh, in various ways. Uh, when you decided to uh, implant, actually, uh, a certain area with energy crop, that should not have a uh, drastic impact on, on the ecosystem itself, uh, i.e. biodiversity and so on, and also the local community in itself, and should not compete, actually, with the food sources. Sustainable energy, climate change, and energy crop. Energy crop is important, actually, as a form of minimizing the impact of, uh, on the climate by absorbing a, a percentage of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere rather than compared with the fossil fuel. And also, it's a sustainable energy. It means will uh, never run out com uh, compared with the fossil fuel, which will run out in the future. Well, thank you for your attention. Uh, goodbye.